7, an effort is made to put the United Nations in the center of implementing the UFO protocol. Grenada. Following a spate of UFO sightings over the tiny island nation, its Prime Minister, Eric Gehry, proposes an initiative to incorporate the UFO problem into the UN's official agenda, and even calls for 1978 to be the United Nations International Year of Unidentified Flying Objects. But the Grenada Initiative fails, garnering no preparation plans and no discussion of UFO contacts whatsoever. There are people that would prefer not to have any evidence of extraterrestrial life whatsoever, that it really violates their views of Earth, of uh, how the universe works, of our sense of being distinctive and, and privileged by being what we are here on this planet. Still, the United Nations does figure into some protocol regarding alien intelligence. Those dealing with an organization of astronomers called SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. What the rules call for is first of all verification by different observatories, then uh, reporting to various scientific agencies in the UN. Because the idea is that this discovery will be made, you know, for all humankind. Coming up, a law authorizing the government to lock up people who have been extraterrestrially exposed. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI, began in 1971 as a NASA program. It primarily uses radio telescopes located around the globe, pointed towards small sections of space, to listen for anomalous signals sent by natural or extraterrestrial sources. SETI's kind of a fun program. Astronomers have told me that, that the odds aren't real high that we'll find anything out there but I think it's a good idea if if we listen we might hear something if we don't listen we definitely won't hear anything though the government stopped funding SETI in 1993 it continues as a private program and should the search for extraterrestrial intelligence be successful and contact made there is a plan for what to do Call the Declarations of Principles Concerning Activities Following the Detection of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. The procedure calls for verifying plausible explanations, not making any public statement until evidence is credible, contacting the United Nations, and not sending any response to an extraterrestrial signal until appropriate international consultations have taken place. So even if it's a small possibility, I think it's worth it, just in case um, we hear something unusual. That would be an exciting day. Many researchers continue to believe the government has more extensive plans for when UFOs land here on our planet. But time and time again, official government secrecy surrounding the issue has stymied their efforts at discovering what these plans may be. The researchers in the field can only go so far because the government doesn't want it to go any further. In, in the absence of honest, straightforward, and open engagement, you grab anything you can and try to find a connection. Some researchers believed that a now-repealed federal law called extraterrestrial exposure was that elusive connection. The law was passed by the U.S. Congress in July 1969, just days before the Apollo 11 astronauts landed on the moon. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. It authorized NASA to quarantine under armed guard any object, person, or other form of life which has been extraterrestrially exposed. But what does extraterrestrially exposed actually mean? That document, I think, has been greatly misunderstood and misquoted and taken to mean that uh, it deals with alien life forms, for instance. Well, I first came to uh, NASA in 1964 during the Gemini program and then on into the Apollo program that took us to the moon and back. Well, I remember very clearly the concern was that if there are microbes on the moon, we didn't want to bring them back here and then contaminate our planet. 
While the extraterrestrial exposure law may not have been the smoking gun some researchers had hoped for, many believe that we can learn something about the government's plans for UFOs by looking at other programs in the intelligence community. I do believe that it's most likely that the U.S. government would be the dominant player in determining a UFO policy at the classified level. I think a good model for this might be the program known as Echelon, which doesn't officially exist, but everyone knows exists. This is a uh, electronic intercept program led by America's National Security Agency in conjunction with the NSA equivalents of Britain, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Echelon has been called the most powerful intelligence gathering organization in the world. It employs an array of surveillance systems around the globe to intercept an estimated three billion communications every day, from telephone calls to emails. Though Australia has admitted its part in Echelon, the NSA still will not answer questions about it, even questions from Congress. Just as Echelon is a global program that is of very, very high levels of secrecy and importance and classification, so too I think it's likely that the UFO phenomenon has a similar kind of international organization that is in all likelihood dominated by uh, American players. Meanwhile, the UFO question will not go away. For every unexplained flash of light in the sky, for every unidentified flying object, a new chapter is written. And for those whose jobs put them on the front lines, it's more than a passing curiosity. All I saw was just a couple real bright flashes of light. Anything that is sufficient to disturb or upset a pilot poses some risk to the aircraft the passengers in the cargo and uh, someone needs to look into it. The government's documents certainly show that the government takes the subject seriously, that they're interested in it and that they realize that it's real regardless of what they say publicly. Given that, one would have to assume that they must have some concern about being prepared. There is far more information that the government holds on this subject than you can imagine, and I'm sure that it includes a whole regimen of protocols to deal with an ET-driven event. They're not going to publish that, because you see, that would be a little hard to explain in the context of their normal pronouncement that, what ET? I don't know, it's a UFO, so it's the Roswell crap again. There are 11 million people in America sitting on a ticking time bomb. Beneath the Mississippi River lurks a deadly system of earthquake faults that could destroy half of Missouri. It's happened before. What have we learned to prevent the next earthquake in the heartland on mega disasters? Tuesday night at 9 on the History Channel.